let's take a look at uh, geometric sequences and series. We'll go ahead and start with a little bit of uh, terminology. Um, since our common change between each term happens to be a common multiple, instead of adding or subtracting, that's an R for ratio, and my ratio is dividing by 3 or multiplying by 1 third. Okay. This is my n equals 1 term for the subscript uh, of the summation that makes this a sub 1. All right, but we don't know which term of the sequence this is. We'll calculate that in just a moment. Knowing that, let's go ahead and plug in to our explicit geometric formula the pieces that we know. a sub n equals a sub 1 is 243. That's the first term. And then times r, which is 1 third, to the n minus 1 power to write our formula. Let's change 243 to 3 to the 5th power. So 3 to the 5th times, and 1 third is 3 to the negative 1. We'll attach the n minus 1 to that. And then we'll combine these together, distributing first. So 3 to the 5th times 3 to the negative n plus 1. And when we add our powers here using exponent rules, we get 3 to the 6 minus n, or 3 to the negative n plus 6. Either one of those is accurate. All right, now that we have our explicit geometric formula, we're now going to calculate which term of the sequence 1 over 81 is. So let's do that off to the side. We're going to do 1 over 81 equals 3 to the 6 minus n. We know that 81 is 3 to the third power, so we're going to rewrite that as 3 to the negative, uh, sorry, 3 to the fourth. Uh, it's 3 to the negative fourth. And then we're going to set each of those equal to each other and solve to calculate which term of the sequence 1 over 81 is. Okay, so that's going to be, if using my rules, if the bases are the same, I can set the exponents equal to each other. And that's going to give me negative n equals negative 10 or n equals 10. So I know that 1 over 81 is the 10th term of the sequence. So n is 10 for the subscript, and this is the 10th term. Okay? Now, knowing that information, let's go ahead and put some stuff into sigma notation so we can talk about, just like we did with the arithmetic example, we'll now talk about the geometric example. The index for us is going to be, and we'll use n like we did before, n equals 1, because that's going to be the subscript of our first term. All right, this is not a zeroth term, so we'll use 1. And then we know that this is the 10th term of the sequence, or series. Let's write this as a series first so that we know that we're changing things up a little bit. So we're now working with the series 243 plus 81 plus 27 plus 9 plus dot 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 plus 1 over 81. So we're now working with the series when we talk about summation. We can use this as our formula that goes beside the sigma notation 3 to the 6 minus n. Okay. And because this is um, a little more complex in terms of calculation, we're going to use our calculator to do this one instead this time. This is our formula for it. We can use that to find the sum, but we are actually going to be using the calculator. I'm going to show you how to do that, introduce that concept. Okay, let's go to math, and we're going to scroll up instead of down all the way to zero. That's summation. All right, see how nice this is. We're going to plug in x for n, and then 1 for the subscript of the first term. And then we're going to just keep on moving this thing around. The upper uh, index or upper limit um, is going to be 10, all right, or bound, upper bound, sorry, lower bound, upper bound. And then we're going to plug in our 3 to the power of 6 minus n or x for us. Scroll to the right, scroll to the right, and that's going to give us our solution for the sum. Okay, 364.5-ish. 
All right, 364.49, something right around in that area. Okay, so that's going to be the sum using the calculator as versus by hand. And now let's just talk a little bit about the infinite sum formula and when we use it, what convergence is, and how that works. Well, this particular sum, let's go back and put 243 plus 81 plus 20, just like we did over here on the side, except this time I'm going to just put dot, dot, dot. All right. Um, whereas the first one is a finite sequence, this is now an infinite series. All right. And it's infinite because we don't know where, we don't have a last term. We don't know where it ends. Okay. When that happens, believe it or not, we actually do still have a sum, but only because the R value happens to be uh, a fraction, absolute value fraction less than one. Okay, so when that happens, R equals one third, we're just going to use our infinite sum formula to calculate the sum of that infinite series. It doesn't seem possible, but because everything decreases uh, infinitely, it, uh, it applies to uh, the concept of limits that we just covered. And so there's a limit. <clears throat> One might say, use the word horizontal asymptote, but for us, we'll, we'll stick with limits. But S sub infinity is A sub 1, which is 243, divided by 1 minus R, which is 1 third. Let's do some calculations here. So we get 243 divided by 2 thirds, and then we're simply going to multiply 243 by 3 halves. Okay, that's kind of a weird number. We'll leave it as a fraction. Uh, let's see, 243, 3, 9, 12, 1, 7, 29. 7, 29 over 2 is going to be our infinite sum. Okay. Notice that this value is exactly 364.5. All right, and then remember back up here, the sum of the first 10 terms was 364.49. Well, as you continue, as we continue adding values, right, even if we go past the 181, as we continue adding values to this series, we're going to get closer and closer and closer to this 364.5. All right, that's the concept of limit which, of course, as we covered earlier, was horizontal asymptote.